10 purchases that improved my painting or made it easier. The first one is this new wave push on box. What I like is that this easily fits into my backpack and I'm more likely to grab it and go outside and do some painting. It's really well constructed and it's super simple to set up. There's no knobs to mess with, there's just a friction hinge that stays put when you adjust it to the angle that you want. Rear earth magnets hold these clamps in place and you can slide them up and down. You can fit an 8x10 vertically in this if you want to, so that's pretty decent size for such a small pochade box. The other thing I like is that the pallet comes out by sliding it out the side, so that makes it very convenient to clean. These magnets come in handy because they'll hold a tin in place. That way I can squeeze the paint out into the tin and not on the pallet. That way it makes it easier to transport because I don't have big piles of paint on my pallet when I transport it. They're inside the tin. Sometimes I also cut out pallet paper and tape it down so when I'm done, I can just peel it off, crumple it up, and put it in a bag. I don't have to bother with cleaning this when I'm out in the field. I've been experimenting with taping metal brackets onto the bottom of my plastic pallets. That way, they stick right to the Peshad box and I can do watercolors. You might be wondering about storage because a lot of Peshad boxes have compartments underneath where you can put your tubes and brushes in there. But that's the cool thing, all your storage goes into your backpack. And when you have this on a tripod, your backpack can hang from the bottom of the tripod and keep it from tipping over. And I could fit much more equipment into my backpack than I can in any Peshad box. If you paint outside, I definitely recommend this. And it even works on a desktop, but you might find you have to have like a small little tripod. My favorite tripod is this one with the bendable legs. That way I can adjust it to different heights. And that's actually more ergonomic because you're not like looking down all the time. You can have it at a better height. You can actually open this up so it's totally flat if you want, or you can bend this to whatever angle you prefer. I highly recommend it, it's well built and I definitely paint more because it's so portable. This is the Slacker Chair from Travel Chair. And this changed the way that I paint outside too because it's lightweight and I can take a seat when I'm painting. That's the thing is it's really uncomfortable to stand all day long. Your feet start to hurt and your lower back might ache a little bit. So it helps to like alternate between sitting and standing. This is super easy to set up. There's just some Velcro that holds it in place and it opens up so there's like a little seat on top. Now don't get me wrong, this is not like sitting on a recliner. There's no padding on here, but it definitely takes a load off and your feet won't hurt as much. It's like having a standing desk where you don't get as fatigued because you're not spending the whole day sitting and you're not spending the whole day standing. And this only weighs like maybe, got my scale here. So it weighs about two pounds, which is pretty lightweight. You can carry it by the strap just by holding it like this, or you could throw it over your shoulder. Sometimes I just hook it onto my backpack and I totally forget that I'm carrying it. Golden open acrylics. These definitely change the way that I think about acrylics and the way that I use them. Here's two different kits. This is the six color intro kit. And this is another kit with seven colors plus white. I think they still have this, but the packaging might look different. So most kits include a number of colors. This one has a larger tube of white because you go through more white and a bottle of open thinner. Open thinner can be used to loosen up paint that's starting to get tacky. And sometimes you can use it to reactivate paint that's dry to the touch. But once the paint is cured, you can't really reactivate it. This kit has one less color and the tube of white is smaller, so it's a less expensive way to try out these paints. It also includes a bottle of open thinner. So the main benefit of these is that they dry slower. And that has a big impact on the way that I paint. For one, it's easier to get like a smooth blend because Regular acrylics dry so quickly, a lot of the times it tacks up before you even had a chance to finish blending it. Other techniques such as like the rub out technique where you tone the canvas and then you wipe it back with a rag to expose the white of the canvas. That's not normally possible with acrylics because they dry so fast, but with these, it's much easier. You can even use the open thinner if you find that the toned canvas is starting to tack up a little bit too much. You just put some on your rag and wipe it away and you should be able to do the rub out technique with this. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see an entire review of Golden Open Acrylics. Water mix boils, those are a game changer too. And that's because you don't have to use thinner to thin them out or to clean your brushes. I'm really sensitive to the smell of solvents. They make me feel nauseous. So I tend to like avoid oils. And that was until I tried out a kit of these Cobra water mix boils. I've since bought more of these kits, but here's a set from Lucas, Windsor Newton, 
Cobra, and Grumbacher. When I was editing this video, I recognized I made a mistake and I bought the wrong kit. These are the traditional oils. What you're looking for are the Grumbacher Max water mixable oils. I don't think they have a kit. You have to buy individual tubes. I used these Windsor & Newton paints in a recent video where I did a demo painting from the book Easy Oil Painting by Estelle Day. You might want to check that out after you watch this video. These are great when you have to paint at home where there's no ventilation. And where I live, it's cold most of the year, so I can't open up the windows to get fresh air in here. And all you need to clean these out is just soap and water. You also don't need thinner to thin the paints out. You could just thin the paint out with water. And that works pretty well. The only odor that I notice is the faint smell of linseed oil. Linseed oil is just basically the oil from flax seeds. Some people have this notion that water mixable oils contain water or somehow they're like an acrylic paint. They're actually linseed oil and pigment. And then they add some sort of emulsifier to it that allows you to wash it out with water. So all the blending techniques that you use with oils, you can use with water mixable oils. I really can't tell the difference, except that I can thin them with water. I'd say these are all good quality paints. I've only tried out two of them so far, but the other brands have a good reputation too. So give these a shot and see if it changes the way you think about oils. Floater frames and gesso boards. These definitely changed the way that I paint. I've been using gesso boards for over a decade. What first attracted me to gesso boards is that I don't have to spend time preparing panels or canvases anymore. I could just rip the wrapper off it and get started. That way I can get more paintings done. Plus I find the quality of these panels are better than what I could do myself. The wood that they use is better than what I find in the hardware store and they're better at woodworking than I am. <laughs> I, I'm not really that good at woodworking, I'm better at painting. So I leave that to someone that has that figured out. So here's the beauty of this system. I have a frame and I bought a gesso board that fits in there perfectly. So all I have to do is drop my finished painting in there and you just attach it with a couple of screws. Think about all the time that you'll save. You don't have to stretch a canvas or prepare a panel with like gesso. And you certainly don't have to make a picture frame which would take forever especially if you don't have all the equipment that you need to make wood frames. Plus, I like the look of these frames. They're modern and minimalistic. This is maple and they have them in different colors and different profiles. Another thing that I like about these is that the full painting gets displayed from edge to edge. A traditional frame has a rabbit that would cover up almost a quarter inch all the way around the painting. And that makes a difference on small paintings like this. But with a floater frame, you display the entire painting. If you want to watch the demo where I frame both of these paintings, I have the link in the description, or you can click the card at the top right corner of the screen. They also have other types of panels like this aqua board, which has a clay coating and a very subtle texture to it. I really like this laptop easel. The thing is, it's inexpensive, but it definitely helps me to get more painting done outdoors. That's because I don't have to set up like a big easel or even a tripod. I could just prop this up on my lap and get started. And that was something I picked up from Nathan Falk's book. He realized that he'd paint more often if he could have a kit that he could carry with him and just put it in his lap to get started painting outside. He also uses the same travel chair. What I like about this easel though is that it folds up into a small box that you can carry with you. It even has a handle on the side and there's a drawer for supplies. I currently have my watercolor kit in here, but I also put my gouache paints in here when I want to paint with gouache. There's room for brushes and little spray bottles to keep your paints wet. There's four different angles that you can adjust it to and this piece of wood gets propped up in these slots. You can also work with it flat. In case you're wondering, you can't put a tripod mount on the bottom because this is actually the drawer and it's not thick enough to hold it anyways. But I find it does work well on a desktop or on your lap when I'm working outside. This Masterson palette in combination with a glass cutting board, definitely changes the way I manage my palette. This glass cutting board fits in there perfectly, and there's enough room so you can grab the edge of it and take it out when you need to clean it. If you forget to clean your palette and the paint dries on the glass, it's no problem cleaning it with one of these safety scrapers. It has a retractable razor blade, and the dried paint is no match for it. You can easily just clean it right off, no problem. The Masterson palette comes with a sponge and a special type of palette paper that will keep regular acrylics wet for weeks. You have to be careful not to leave it in there for too long because you might get mold, but I never really had an issue with that. But the thing is when you use open acrylics, you don't even need the sponge. I often just like mist the top of this with some water and that's enough to keep the humidity level high enough in here. 
I have an entire video on how I set this up and use it with the cutting board. There's a link to it in the description below. Whether you paint with oils or acrylics, a palette like this will prevent you from wasting your paint. And that saves you money. Artist grade paints are expensive, so when you scrape them off your palette and throw them away, it's like throwing away money. And that leads me to these paint tube bringers, which will save you money because you'll be able to squeeze out every last drop of your paint from your tubes. Before I started using paint tube bringers, I actually had a metal pipe that I would use to roll out the extra paint out of a paint tube. These work a lot better because they have gears on there that will pull the paint tube through there and they're much more ergonomic than using a pipe. This one I received for free from the manufacturer, but it has no impact on my opinion of it. Now I've had this one for years and it keeps on working. I have an entire video on these two paint tube ringers. There's a link to it in the description if you want to see how they work. Paddle brushes were another game changer for me. These ones are from Liquitex and I have a couple different sizes here. There's a four inch, three inch, and I just bought the two inch paddle brush. What I like about them is they're more ergonomic. When you have a regular conventional handle, it's kind of awkward to hold onto it and apply a lot of pressure. But since you can grab it like this, you can apply much more force without straining your hand. And that allows you to mash the paint into the canvas and to spread it out without too much effort. A house painting brush is too thick. When you have paint on here, you can actually get this to a nice point and you can paint like thinner lines like this, or you can paint wide swatches. Even if you don't paint large, these come in handy for gessoing canvases or applying gel or anything else to a canvas in large quantities. These are all the supplies I wish I had when I first started. Give them a try and see if you like them. Up next, you can watch my water mixable oil demonstration, my video on how to use a glass cutting board as a palette, or my video on how to frame small panels. Thanks for watching.